Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Already so far we have completed seven main problems on techniques of financial statement analysis. In this video, the next problem, eighth problem I am going to start. So don't join in between my suggestion. If you want the complete command on the subject, watch the videos in sequence one after the other. If you have not watched, go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject cost control and management accounting, select the topic techniques of analysis of financial statements. Watch the initial videos, be clear about the concept of what are the techniques, how to prepare comparative, how to prepare common size and trend analysis. The starting videos are very, very important. So before starting the eighth problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Now see the eighth one. From the following information, prepare comparative balance sheet and comment. So here it is asking you to prepare a comparative balance sheet. In the problem, balance sheet is given in a horizontal form. But nowadays, the balance sheet is not required to make it in a horizontal form. It is in the form, vertical form, statement form. So I have prepared the comparative statement in a vertical form. Here, liability side, equity, reserves, bills payable, creditors, debentures, outstanding expense, long-term loans, short-term loans. So we marshal it all these items into three categories. That is uh, shareholders fund, non-current liabilities and liabilities. So what are the items that will come under shareholders fund, equity and reserves? These two will come under uh, shareholders fund. Next comes non-current liability. Under non-current liability, we'll take debentures and long-term loans. Next, current liability. Remaining all items are current liability. Example, bills payable, creditors, outstanding expenses, short-term loans. That's all. In this way, we categorize the liabilities. Now, assets will divide it into two categories. That is non-current assets and current assets. First one, bills receivable, cash, data, stock, prepaid expenses. All these are the current assets. Then land and building, furniture, machinery and plant, goodwill. These will be taken under fixed assets. And bank will be taken under current assets. That's all. This is the information. Very easy problem. Only the thing is you have to remember the format. See carefully. Equity and liabilities, shareholders fund, share capital, equity. Last year, current year. Years are not specified. That's why I have written LY. Last year, current year. So first we fill up the data in these two columns. Afterwards, we complete absolute change in percentage change. So equity and reserves given in the problem as it is I have taken. The non-current liabilities, debentures and long-term loans. These two. Current liabilities are four items. Bills payable, creditors, outstanding expenses and short-term loans. That's it. Whatever amounts are given, same thing I have taken. The total of the liability side last year, current year, we got it. Now, asset side. Assets are divided into non current assets. Under non current assets, we'll take the fixed assets. Now, fixed assets are fixed assets are land building, furniture, machinery, and plant, goodwill. These are these four are the fixed assets. Same amounts are taken. Now, current assets. The remaining all items are current assets, bills receivable, cash, data, stock, prepaid expenses and bank. The same values I have copied down, I got the total of the current uh, assets, the total of the asset side. Now, how to find out the absolute change? Already I told you in the last so many problems. Absolute change is current year value minus last year value. 150 minus 150 is 0, no change. 5050 0, 0, minus 4050, 0, 0, 1000 is the change, 24 point. How to find out absolute change, current year value minus last year value. And how to find out percentage change, absolute change divided by last year figure into 100. So 1000 divided by 4050 0, 0, into 100, 24.69. Similarly, 0 minus 4000 is minus 4000. Now minus 4000 divided by 4000 into 100, you will get minus 100. Similarly, 31,000 minus 42,000, it's minus 11,000. So minus 11,000 divided by 42,000 into 100, 26.19 minus. Like this, you have to calculate all the absolute change and percentage change for the liabilities as well as for the assets. That's it. 
so this is the end of problem number eight come on now i'm going to start the next problem problem number nine from the information given below prepare a comparative balance sheet and study the financial position of preksha limited so again we are required to make the comparative balance sheet and then we have to give the comment balance sheet as a 31st december <coughs> So here all the assets and liability values are given. So we have to present all these assets and liability in a systematic formal balance sheet, in a vertical form, statement form. So equity share capital, reserves and surplus. These two will be taken under shareholders fund. Then debentures and long-term loans. These two will be taken under non-current liability. And bills payable, sundry creditors, other current liability. These three will be taken under current liability. Next, land and building, plan and machinery, furniture and fixture, other fixed assets. These four items will be taken under fixed assets, non-current assets. Then cash and bank, bills receivable, sundry creditors, stock. These four items will be taken under current assets as usual. So all the figures of last year, last year was 2016 and current year is 2017. That's all. This is the problem. <clears throat> now, see the solution carefully. Preksha Bank Limited, Preksha Limited, uh, comparative balance sheet as it for the year 2016 2017. So, this is the format of the balance sheet. First, we are taking equity and liabilities. Under equity and liabilities, shareholders fund. Under shareholders fund, we will take the share capital. So, here we have equity capital, reserves, and surplus. These two items are given in the problem. <clears throat> I have taken the same amount last year currently. Non-current liabilities, two liabilities are given that is debentures and long-term loans. Same values I have copied from the problem. Current liabilities, three current liabilities are given, bills payable, sundry creditors and other current liabilities. Same values I have taken. The total of last year is 14,35,000 and the total of liabilities of the current year is 16,95,000. So after taking these two columns only, we'll start calculating absolute change and percentage change. Now I'm coming to the asset side. <clears throat> assets, non-current assets, fixed assets. Four fixed assets are given. That is land and building, plan and machinery, furniture fixture, other current, other fixed assets. Same totals I have taken. Same values I have given, whatever is given in the problem. Then current assets, four current assets are given. Cash and bank, bills, receivables, sundry returns and stock. All the values are taken. The total of the assets are 14 lakh 35,000, 16 lakh 95,000. The balance sheet is static. Liability side total same. Assets same. Now, absolute change and percentage change. Already we have done so many problems on finding out how to calculate the absolute change and percentage change. So, absolute change. The current year value minus last year value, 8 lakh minus 6 lakh is 2 lakh. Percentage change, absolute change divided by last year figure into 100. 2 lakh divided by 6 lakh into 100, we'll get this one. Similarly, 2 lakh 20,000 minus 3 lakh 30,000, you'll get minus 1 lakh 10,000. So, minus 1 lakh 10,000 divided by 3 lakh 30,000 into 100, minus 33.33. Similarly, for debentures, 3 lakh minus 2 lakh is 1 lakh. 1 lakh divided by 2 lakh into 100, 50%. That's all. Like this, you have to calculate all the absolute change values and percentage change values for all the assets and liabilities. Now, after making all these calculations, we have to give the interpretation. So, how to give the interpretation? I'm showing it here. We have to relate the current assets with current liability to express our view on liquidity position. Liquidity means ability of the business to pay the current liabilities on time. These are the current liabilities. These should be paid on time. From where it will be paid? It should be paid from current assets. Current liabilities should be paid from current assets. So normally the increase in current assets should be more than increase in current liability. Then we can say the liquidity position has improved. Now, see the percentage increase in current assets. Cash increased by 30, 300%. Last year, 20,000 cash. Current year, 80,000 cash. There is huge increase in cash balance, 300%. Then, bills receivable decreased by 40%. Sundry data increased by 25%. Stock increased by 40%. 
these are the increase in current assets. Now, what are the increase in current liabilities? Uh, current liability bills payable there is decrease by 10%. Sundry credit was 20% increase, other current liability 100% increase. So, if you compare this current assets and current liability, the current assets have increased at a higher level than current liability. That means the liquidity position has improved in the year 2017. So your conclusion, there is an improvement in liquidity position. There is a large increase in surplus cash which can be gainfully invested. See, liquidity position should be adequate. It should be neither high nor low. If we keep more excessive current assets, that is also waste. Because idle money will not generate any income. It should be appropriately invested. So here cash balance has increased by 300%. So the company has to probe into this matter why the cash increased so heavily. Why we are keeping so much of cash. Otherwise we would have invested this cash in some investment avenue. So that we can be able to get some return. So the company has to find out what is the need of holding this excessive cash. Secondly, the fixed assets have been fully financed by the long term funds. Financial management is satisfactory. First, we have given the opinion about liquidity. Second, we have to give the opinion about the investment in fixed assets. So there is a rule in financial management that fixed assets should be financed from long term funds. The long term funds are share capital and non current liability. Share capital and non current liability, these are the long term funds. And the fixed assets must be financed from long term funds. How we can be able to know the increase in long term funds should be higher than the increase in fixed assets? That means all the fixed assets must be financed from long term funds. Now we'll see how much is the increase in long term funds. The share capital has increased by 33.33%. Whereas reserves and surplus decreased by 33.33%. Debentures increased by 50% and long term loan increased by 33.33%. So overall all the long term funds have increased. Now come to fixed assets. Land and building increase, uh, decreased by 27%. Plant and machinery increased by 50%. Fixture and fitting 25%. Other fixed assets 20%. So we can see that there is increase in fixed assets, uh, fixed long term funds. There is increase in long term funds and also increase in fixed assets. The proportion of increase is almost the same. So we can conclude that fixed assets are financed from long term funds. It's a good financial management practice. That is the second interpretation. Now third interpretation is regarding profitability. Actually we can give the opinion about profitability by seeing the income statement. But in our problem income statement is not given. So we can uh, give the conclusion of profitability by seeing the reserves and surplus because whatever profit company get the profit will be included in reserves and surplus so normally reserves and surplus should increase if the profit increases reserves and surplus should also increase but here what is happening reserves and surplus has decreased by 33.33% so why the reserves have decreased? One of the reasons may be loss. Due to losses in the business, the reserves and surplus might be decreased. It is not the, that reason which sure. We are expecting that why these reserves has decreased. One of the reasons may be the profitability has come down. That is the reason. But we have to probe into the matter and find out what is the real cause. Until unless we get the complete information, we cannot come to the conclusive proof that profitability has decreased. Now here, the profitability position is not satisfactory. The reason for the decline in reserves have to be looked into. Why the reserves and surplus have declined, that we have to look into. If it is on account of capitalizing, resulting in increase in equity share capital, there is no concern. However, if it is on account of writing off, the company might be heading for trouble. 
expected possibility I am showing that this decrease in reserves and surplus is on account of capitalization then there is no matter of concern because the share capital has increased that is the reason why the reserves and surplus may be decreased it may be possible that uh, there will be some capitalization of profit capitalization profit means bonus shares might have been increased by utilizing the reserves by utilizing the it is a possibility that reserves from reserves only bonus shares are issued when bonus shares are issued share capital will increase reserves and surplus will decrease if that is the reason then there is no matter of concern but if no bonus shares are issued but still these reserves and surplus are declining decreasing because writing of of the assets or expenditure have increased if that is the reason then company is heading towards some trouble <coughs> last one overall the overall financial situation of the company appears to be satisfactory there is not, not much matter of concern from this balance sheet comparative balance sheet we can conclude that the financial position of the company is satisfactory in this way you have to give the explanation interpretation on comparative statement so this is the end of problem number nine